Israel-Gaza-Iran War News Live Update The House Condemns the ICC The House passed legislation Tuesday to punish the International Criminal Court, ICC, as it considers war crimes accusations against Israeli commanders for their battle with Hamas. The plan passed 247 to 155, with all Republicans voting yes. They joined 42 pro-Israel Democrats who had supported Tel Aviv against their leadership. Both parties' leaders, including President Biden, have strongly rejected the ICC's accusation that Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu and his defense minister committed crimes against humanity in Gaza after Hamas's October 7 terrorist assaults. However, Biden opposed the sanctions key to the Republican package, and most Democrats supported it when it passed. The bill cannot pass the Senate and reach Biden without widespread Democratic backing. The ICC's accusation that Israel, a Democratic ally, and Hamas, a terrorist outfit, committed the same crimes infuriated both government's followers. They claimed approving the bill, even in the House, would show the world that Washington supports Israel's right to self-defense. We find it inconceivable that they would issue an arrest warrant for Israel's prime minister and defense minister while they're battling Hamas as a proxy of Iran, Speaker Mike Johnson, Republican Louisiana, said Tuesday. I said a couple of weeks ago that the ICC must be penalized for this action. Democratic bill opponents disagreed. Nearly majority accept Israel's right to strong defense in a dangerous region. However, they strongly criticize Netanyahu and his far-right coalition government, which has rejected Biden's ceasefire appeals, ignored the administration's red-line warnings about attacking Rafa, and opposed the White House's two-state solution. Since October 7, Israel's military operations have killed over 35,000 Palestinians in Gaza, prompting accusations that Netanyahu has done too little to limit civilian casualties. The ICC's top prosecutor recommended war crimes charges against Israel. I oppose this resolution because we need the ICC. In the previous 241 days, thousands have been victims of unthinkable crimes, and Netanyahu's international law violations have imperiled world peace, Rep. Delia Ramirez, Democrat Illinois, said Tuesday. I'm determined to end impunity for these criminals. ICC officials would face travel and financial sanctions under Rep. Chip Roy, Republican Texas, S. Measure. It grants the president the unilateral ability to end sanctions if the ICC ceases investigating or arresting U.S. citizens or allies or permanently stops investigating protected individuals. The bill is mostly symbolic. U.S. does not recognize ICC and does not consider Americans within its jurisdiction. However, some Democrats rejected the GOP bill because it may sanction U.S. partners who have accepted the ICC charter. It would penalize the leaders of our biggest allies, the UK, Italy, Germany, Japan. Rep. Gregory Meeks, New York, top Democrat on the House Foreign Affairs Committee, called it risky. It might sanction American corporations that supply software and technology to the court. Its scope makes it harmful for us. After bipartisan sanctions bill talks failed, Republican leadership voted on the GOP-only bill. Rep. Michael McCall, Republican Texas, the Foreign Affairs Committee chair, had been discussing ICC punishment legislation with House and Senate Democrats. McCall stressed the necessity of deterring the ICC judges when they consider the arrest warrants and wanted the final draft to be bipartisan and likely to pass. The White House announced late last week that it opposed penalties, despite criticizing the ICC's move, which Johnson said dashed expectations for a bipartisan solution. I worked on it all weekend. I worked on it till late Sunday, to make it bipartisan. I think House and Senate members were intrigued, Johnson remarked Tuesday. But the White House refused to support penalties, which was intolerable to us. Perhaps that's why it.